Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. I hope you guys are ready for some combine content. In this video, we continue work on the S790 combine we got in the shop that it was a trade-in machine. Um, had a bunch of down corn ran through it, so the dirt just absolutely destroyed the augers. Um, we recently pulled the vertical auger out of the combine, and the flighting is absolutely smoked. Um, if you haven't watched the previous video, I'll put a card up here um, where you guys can watch that video. But uh, vertical auger smoked, the unload augers are smoked, the uh, loading auger for the grain tank was smoked, and the bearing was missing, and the clean grain elevator chain, basically the entire clean grain and unload system smoked. So in this video, we're going to put a new vertical in it. We're going to show you how to put the inner horizontal auger in and then how to properly time those. Um, so stick, stick around. It's going to be really good uh, information for you guys to know when you're replacing vertical auger and horizontal augers. You know, there's certain steps that you have to take and make sure everything's in properly timed. So I think it's going to be a really good video for you guys to see. Um, I had to re-record this intro because um, when I did the intro in the shop, all you could hear was an impact wrench blazing at air raid siren volume. So I'm here on my porch. Got my dog Toby here. Toby, you want to see some combine content? You want to work on some combines? No. He doesn't want to work on combines. He's tired. <laughs> anyway, let's check it out. So Josh has already got the outer and the middle hugger out and if you want to see a detailed video on how to do unload augers I'll throw it up here in the description you guys can check that out and uh, Josh right now is working on getting the bolts out for the the carrier for the the inner auger and I was nice and I showed him the Indian trick to get that thing broke free because usually they're they're seized up here on the on the threads on the 90 degree gear case so what I do is I take a, a chain and I throw a chain down the tube wrap it around that auger and then I come up here and I stick a large um, pry bar with a pointed tip to go through the chain and then I pry against that door and what that does is it puts pressure on that auger but it also picks it up on this end so it's not binding on the splines down here and it'll break that that auger free pretty easily so that's what he, he's in the process of doing now so here's this trick you get the chain like that and then use the pry bar she pop free pop free like it was nothing huh oh yeah and a lot of times you can go down there and pry for days and go to that hole move it up and down and it won't ever go. But that trick works every time. And then you can use the chain to pull it all the way down here. See, it's a win-win. Until it comes off. Oh, did it come off? It came off. Oh. That's hard. All right, so right now, we got that inner auger all the way out. He's gonna pull it out so far and then he's gonna lift the scissor lift up to it to support it and then thread it the rest of the way out. All right, now he's just gonna thread it out on that rail. Oh yeah, there you go. I'll drop her straight down. Okay, we're back at the vertical gear case here. So a little helpful tip is you wanna clean these edges up real good and put some anti-seize on there and clean these up real good too. Anti-seize those. So it's a lot easier for the next guy to drop it off out of the charge housing. Um, you wanna get the the splines cleaned up and this is a real good opportunity to hit this grease circuit right here until you get grease out of this seal and kind of purge some of the the old grease out of there so we know that that uh, shaft bearings are all greased up with clean grease um, get the splines cleaned up and I seize those splines 
And then here's another tip I've picked up over the years is these back holes right here, whenever you get this charge housing back up in there, these holes almost never line up with the gear case. So I drew on a marker here, kind of show, I just take a, a double cut burr bit and open up these holes just a little bit. Because all the other bolts will go in just fine. It's the bolts on the back side. And what really sucks is when you finally get that auger splined up in there, and then you've got, you know, you start putting all the bolts in, these back bolts won't thread in because your bolt wants to hit the charge housing, mainly on the sides right here. So before I even shove that thing up in there, I just open up those holes a little bit um, so we don't have any problems starting the bolts on the back side because it's, you know, a real booger to try to have to um, either come back here with a 90 degree die grinder in a mirror and trying to oblong those holes where you can get bolts started or you're going to have to pull the, the gear case back down and you really don't want to have to do that so you know five minutes there is going to save you hours later and it ain't going to hurt anything to make those holes just a little bigger so we'll get that done and then we'll start uh, put the new auger up in there we got everything cleaned up ready to go back up in there so Twist. It's like the back's got to come towards the tire.
hold up. That is pretty close to levelish. There you go, huh? And back is a couple of tires just to. Oh, ooh, ooh, maybe, maybe. Oh. Yeah, but I gotta go on top and check the alignment. Okay. So, try to pull that back here. All right. Hey, Patrick. I'll have you run the jack and then go on up top. Alright, the top of the auger needs to go to the north. You gotta move the gear case south. Somehow. Almost started in the spacer. Like that? More. Right there. Right up. there? Or back with touch. You gotta go up. Up. Okay, coming up. Wiggle the, the, the auger as you're going up. Yeah. It's touching on the back of the housing there. Yeah, now get your housing lined up with down. There it is. Okay. Come up. You know, right there. Uppy uppy. Hold that, hold that. Uh, that tray behind you, please. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we got her up in there. I went up top. I was laying up top there looking in that first door in the turret so I could eyeball the top of the auger so we could get that splined into place. Now that we've got it up into the charge housing, now is when you want to start your back bolts first. Get those four that are usually tight in first and then work on the, the rest of your bolts there. So, did you get all four of them in back there, Josh? Yep. Last two, right here. Yeah, see if you didn't not blog those holes, you would have been there for a while. Yeah. So, once you get up, don't tighten anything yet. Okay. So what you wanna do is get all the bolts started. Just get them in there started by hand. And then what you're gonna do is take the jack off the bottom of the vertical, and then you're gonna spin that vertical auger so that gear case gets centered. Because if you just go straight up and get the bolts in and then torque it down, sometimes when you turn that sprocket, there'll be a really tight spot. Like sometimes it'll just lock up. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up this bottom shaft with that top shaft so okay. we got to get that gear case centered okay. so with all the bolts loose and all the pressure off we'll spin it and get it centered and then we'll lock it down and you always want to make sure that it feels the same all the way around I get it. 13. so here's the old auger in case you guys missed the last video but uh yeah there's like nothing left of this and this thing only has 500 separator hours on it. Usually if I see a vertical that's wore down like this and it has a thousand hours on it, I think that is extremely excessive. But this one only has 500 hours on it. So thin is just rolling the edges. So that's why we're replacing it. But the splines are good. Sometimes these splines will strip out or get really, really loose. And then eventually they'll strip out and that this vertical auger will hit the, uh, the horizontal auger and snap your shear bolt and then these will be locked together and then you're in trouble. Now Josh is going to feed the inner unload auger into the hole and then slide it all the way down to there and then we'll get it splined on and get everything timed and we'll bolt it in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys where you gotta have the vertical to get it timed correctly. So you want it just like this. You want the flighting to be directly underneath the arm of that gear case, right there. And then the horizontal, the end of the flighting is gonna be pointing straight down towards the bottom of the tube. That's whenever you're properly timed, when they're 90 degrees away from each other. 
Okay, so we got the auger slid down. And what I do is I have this auger pulled back and then I get that vertical lined up with that shaft, right? And then I have the end of the horizontal about here. And then I get my, my flighting down at the bottom and the short flat edge of that flighting needs to point straight down. But it's, you know, it's only a flat piece about this big. And it'll be at the bottom of the tube pointing straight down. And I get that timed and then I put a little mark on that flighting right there and I line it up with this middle hole, this bolt right here, so I know whenever I shove it in that that flighting is time where it needs to be. And then I put a couple boards right here so I can stick my bar up here and then just be able to raise straight up on the auger and then I just wiggle it onto the shaft and spline it in until it drops in. Now we're just going to go back here and get the auger bolted in. Okay, we got the carriage bolts in up there. Got that auger bolted in, so it's good to go. All right, so unfortunately, we have officially ran out of parts on this combine. I'm still waiting on an auger, um, the middle horizontal auger to get in. So we're gonna have to go ahead and switch gears and we're gonna have to go work on a combine out in the country. Um, a really good customer of mine, Trilogy Farms, has got an S680 combine. Um, that I inspected so we're gonna hammer out some work over there but it's an hour drive there hour drive back you know it's hard to get a lot of work done in the day when you're spending you know two hours driving and then at least 30 45 minutes you know unpacking and packing your stuff back up every day but uh, it's gonna be warm outside it's gonna be in the 90s uh, so it's gonna be hot um, we got to do quite a bit of work to the feeder house we're basically gonna rebuild the feeder house and I'll show you guys how to do all that. We're gonna do a feeder house drum. We're gonna pull the mid floor out. We're gonna do upper sprockets, conveyor chain, um, the back shaft, we're gonna pull that out. So that'll be really good for you guys to see. Also, we're going to pull the separator drive out of this combine. So last fall, it was leaking really bad. Um, I was able to kind of band-aid it and get it through the season, but now, that we have some extra time now this summer. We're going to pull that separator drive and just completely go through it and rebuild it. Um, it's also got a real pump drive that is locked up to where I couldn't even turn the feeder house at all when I inspected it. And I found that the real pump was locked up. So I'll show you, how, you guys how to rebuild that. So stick around. Look out for the next video. Um, it'll be a really good video for you guys to see. Um, until then, keep that green iron moving and I'll see you on the next one.